spring settings will be different if you have different brands of equipment. So always kind of play and find what tension works for you on each individual day. Um, my stock chair is a split pedal. I don't have it split, um, but I do have two heavy low and two light top um, on the spring settings on this chair to start with some footwork. So I'm going to start in a narrow heels on, adducted parallel, sitting on the edge of the seat. So I want to try to balance on my sit bones. A lot of times on my first move, I like to press my hands into the chair so I get taller in my posture and wide across those collarbones, so kind of like a little chest expansion press. And I'm going to say dorsiflexed, heels on. And I'm going to press up and down, trying to engage the abdominals every time I press in, and also that posture in the back of the spine. I usually do eight to 10 of each of these. I obviously can vary based on how you feel, but if you like you get taller every time you press the pedal down. I'm gonna do one more. Then I'm gonna switch to a Pilates V still on my heel. This time I'm gonna kind of T press or adduct into the side of the chair. So now I'm gonna press down and again trying to activate the scapular muscles, making sure the turn notice from the hips and the knees and toes follow. So I'm in the heels together, toes apart, Pilates V. And I'm just pressing my hands into the side of the chair with nice neutral wrists. Breathing in and out with your motion. I'm going to do one more like this. And then I'm going to switch to my feet wide, still in my heels. And then this time I'm going to try just a stacked genie arm. If you need to hold on to the chair for your stability, always do so. But you should feel like you're balancing on your sits bones. So a lot of times the kind of pubic bone area is just off the edge of the chair so you really can find that posture, feeling that your ribs don't flare forward or your body sat back, but stay nice and tall as you press up and down. So it's leg pumps, footwork on the chair, getting some warmth in those legs. I'm going to do one more like this. And there's my heels on parallel, lateral, and first or second position. So I'm going to come back to the middle, and I'm going to be just line up with my sits bones. So I have like probably a grapefruit or a fist or two distance apart. And I'm going to do the wrapped toes, that previous sole. So on my arches, heels low, kind of toes wrapped over. And then I'm just going to reach my arms out. And as I press the pedal down, I'm going to lift them up a little bit and bring them back down. So trying to find the stability in the posture so those ribs and hips stay lined up and my shoulders stay connected so they're not hiking up and just adding the arm raise to challenge my upper half stability a little more. Arms are always optional if you feel a little like a weeble wobble on the chair. This is challenging my Achilles, the length in the back of my ankle to keep those feet pretty still as my arches wrap over. I'm going to do one more like this, and then bring it in. Now I'm going to slide to the balls of my feet, and I'm going to find a high half toe position or an elevated heel without letting your ankles roll out or in, but to stay nice and lined up. Okay, here I'm going to make a circular shape or hug a tree. So as I press down, I'm going to open my arms, and as I close the springs, I'm going to close my arms. You're doing it the opposite, it doesn't really matter. Again, nice and tall in the posture and really feeling that those abs stay connected, the back and ab muscles are kind of sandwiching my spine to keep it as stable as I can. Breathing, of course, <laughs> and tall in that posture. Now, I'm gonna hold my pedal halfway down Sometimes I put my hands on my thighs just as my own feedback. Those quads are still working to hold it there. And then I'm going to flex my ankles and point my ankles. So it kind of reminds me of like the uh, stop and go traffic, <laughs> gas pedal brake. So pointing and flexing the ankles, the pedal does move, but my thighs aren't supposed to. So if you notice them pushing against your hand, you probably have more movement there. You want to try to isolate that ankle articulation. All right, now I'm going to find
find a narrow Pilates knee. We did it on our heels earlier. Now we're going to challenge to do it on the toes in an eye heel position. So I'm going to bring my hands to the back of my head. It could be forehead or Mickey Mouse, Bullwinkle, whatever. Finding that spot. So I want to try to get wide across the collarbones. And again, making sure my ribs and hips stay in line. And then I'm going to just hold that position as I press up and down. add an extra challenge, I'm going to add a small side bend each time I press the pedal down and coming back to the middle. So I'm just aiming my elbow slightly towards the side of my chair, but trying to stay tall in the rest of my posture. And do one more on each side and then release. Okay, I'm going to take my toes wide. So again, we did that on our heels, now we're gonna do it on our toes. You don't always have to do all of this, but sometimes I like to get that full connection. I'm gonna put my hands back behind my head again and find my posture. And now as I press the pedal, I'm gonna rotate small to opposite sides or alternate sides. So my challenge here is not to let my lower half turn. So that's why it's not real big, because my sits bones need to stay anchored in place as I separate the upper half and the lower half. So a little bit of rib cage rotation. And eyes usually lead the spine. So my eyes kind of go with me as I turn. And I'm going to do one more because that makes me even on my twist. And then bring it in. So that's my footwork here. If you have healthy wrists and shoulders, my next move will probably be appropriate for you. So if you find your high heel Pilates V in the middle of the pedal on your toes, put the heel of the hand on the edge of your chair. We're going to get set up for a little frog, it's called, or frog back with my back to the chair. So I'm going to pull my pelvis just off the edge of the chair. I have the pedal all the way down. And I want to make sure those shoulders are down away from my ears. And then pull my feet towards my seat and back down. So I'm just lifting the pedal up and down. I can do this in a little three press up, one press down. Using your breath. I'm going to do that one more time. And then sit back on the chair. So that's just a little hamstring for holding that frog shape. So now I can add a little tricep dip to it. The way I like to warm that up and make sure that we're all set for it is keep that pedal on the floor, hips off the edge, and then test my little tricep dip. Just do a couple, three of those maybe, to find that I'm stable. You can stay there or let that pedal come up into your hovered frog. And then again, really strong in the shoulder girdle, bending and straightening the elbows. <laughs> You'll hear my breath catch when I'm trying to talk and breathe and do something challenging. And then sit back on my chair. So three to five of a lot of those types of moves is usually plenty. All right, I'm gonna step off of my chair and turn and face it. I'm going to put my right foot on the pedal, my hands on the seat of the chair, and rest my shin, or right below my kneecap, on the top of the seat. My back leg is away. It kind of looks like a track starting block, and I want to make sure I'm strong, my shoulders and abs are in. And then I'm going to ankle <laughs> articulate. It's going to stretch the Achilles and then activate all those calf muscles. So like we did sitting, it's a standing version of ankle. If it's too heavy for you, feel free to Take a spring off to make it a little bit less. And then two more. And then I like to press the pedal all the way down to switch feet, but I'm going to stretch out the calf of the leg that just did the work, which was my right. And then I'm going to take my right foot, step back a little bit away from the chair, let that pedal come up till my left shin is resting, strong in the shoulders, and then I'm going to press the pedal up and down right there. that ankle stability and mobility at the same time because I don't want it to roll side to side but just articulate up and down working all those ankle muscles I got two more and then I'm gonna press the pedal down stand on again and drop the left heel for a big stretch 
and I'm gonna lighten my touch on the chair, just holding it for balance, and I'm gonna alternate side to side, like a standing version of our running or prancing ankle articulation. So now it's a more straight leg version with a stretch. And I'm gonna step up and let that pedal come up. I'm gonna lighten my tension. I'm going down to two springs for this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep one heavy low and one light top. So if I were on um, a chair that only had two springs, I would have, probably have one spring somewhere in that middle setting, like two or three feet on the balance body chair, and I'm on the stop. So I'm gonna start with a hamstring curl. I kind of judge, like if my foot can fit right at the base in a kind of normal bridge shape if I were on the floor, where that foot is on the floor, that kind of helps me figure out where to set up. So again, wide collarbones laying on my back as neutral in my spine as I can. So trying to keep that tailbone heavy. Now I'm gonna have my heels on here and I'm gonna try to pull the pedal all the way to the floor. If you can't get there, <laughs> you might be too close. So you may have to adjust where you're at. And I really wanna focus on, again, abs compressing the spine and those hamstrings, the back of the thigh, pulling that pedal down and up with control. So working that posterior chain a little bit. I'm gonna hold the pedal down on this next one and make sure my heels are all the way on that pedal. So sometimes I adjust my feet to make sure it's not gonna slip off. And then I'm gonna articulate up to a bridge. So I'm gonna tilt my pelvis and peel my spine up. And I'm just holding the pedal down as I do this. And then I'm gonna melt it all the way back down. If you had some disc injuries or osteoporosis or something that maybe this isn't the best for your spine, you can always just lift your hips up in one piece. But I need a little mobilization this morning. And then melting it back down. Trying to stay in the center of my highway. I sometimes feel like my spine is doing a little shift. And down. And then I'm going to let the pedal come back up. So now a progression to that, if you're up for it, is adding a bridge with the pedal up at the top. So my hamstrings are going to be active right away. So I'm going to lift my hips up. You could just sometimes I like a little more of my foot on there. I'm going to lift up to that bridge and then lower back down. So I'm trying to hold the pedal pretty still. I do pull it just a teeny bit out so the spring's pre-activated. It makes it a little bit easier for my part two. So I'm gonna hold this bridge up and then add very small hamstring curl. This would be a little nicer if I had more tension on the chair, but I chose a light spring setting, which makes this a little bit more hamstring challenge. My glutes need to be on to keep my hips open. I'm thinking knees pointing towards the top of my door frame in front of me. One more. And then I'll lower myself back down. I'm going to go right into frog line flat. So I'm going to bring the soles of my feet together, kind of like I'm clapping my feet. And I'm already in that kind of turned out position. So my pedal is going to come down as a result of increasing my external rotation versus just trying to shove the pedal down. So I like to think like frog, if I were doing feet on the straps on the reformer, my knees are pulling in towards my shoulders and my feet are coming right into my midline. So I, the further range I have, the more that pedal will come down to the floor versus just trying to shove it down, which may compromise my spine position. So I'm feeling lots of things going on in my hip socket, some inner thighs, some deep seat, those external rotators are definitely kicked in. My abs are compressing to stabilize my lumbar pelvic area. This one's kind of nice after the other one. There's definitely some work going on. And then I'll release that. All right, I'm gonna roll up and straddle my chair. You may need to adjust where you're seated. I wanna be able to reach the pedal. And this is an ab curl, ab prep. Feels a lot like our spine stretch for. So I'm gonna flex my spine and as I do so, my pelvis is going to roll back a little bit and then come back up. So I'm trying to find that round back. My eye gaze goes 
goes down towards the with the pedal. So I can keep those arms basically straight and tilt the pelvis into kind of an imprint and a little lumbar flexion to do that. And then a second version of this exercise, I can flex forward over my vertical pelvis, pulling my ribs down and my elbows will have to bend to get into that one. So this is another version I like. So it's a little more ab curl and then up. So my hamstrings get a little length after those bridges because they're straight. And I'm warming up those abs a little bit more. This feels pretty good to me, so I'm going to do it one more time. And then I'm going to release that. Alright, so from here I'm going to take this into a plank. So I'm going to transition to kneeling where I can just reach the pedal with about a 45 degree angle of my arms and my feet are um, and right back behind me. I'm going to round down like a kneeling cat, so I'm going to round my spine. I'm going to press the pedal all the way to the floor, trying to pull my belly in and stretch that upper spine. And then I'm going to bring it back up. I'm going to do that two more times and then I'm going to turn this into a plank. So I'm going to round down first, trying to keep hips and knees pretty lined up. That'll depend on where you are away from your chair. And I'm going to keep the pedal down here. So the heel of my hand is on the pedal. My fingertips are towards the wood. So that helps make my wrist a little bit more neutral than a regular plank on the floor. I'm going to step one foot at a time back and find my long line. So my crown of the head is reaching to the opposite wall. I'm staying on my feet. My whole body is active holding this position. I'm going to remove my knees down and bring it back up. So you could do a few of those, you could hold it longer. I'm going to progress this into opening into a side plank, center plank, side plank. So feel free to play along if you want. So I'm going to round down, pedal stays still, stepping my feet out to a plank. I keep my feet a little bit apart on this, so when I open to the side plank, it works better. I'm going to swivel my feet and then I'm going to let go of the pedal and find a straight line in a side plank. Really strong in the bottom shoulder, top hand reaching, trying to stay nice and long there. The hand can go to the sky, you can stay on your side. And then I rotate my hand and shoulders back down, my feet back to the middle. I'm going to hold this for a few breaths. Center plank, long line from head to heels. And then I'm going to rotate my feet to the other side and open to a side plank here. Again, trying to find a nice long line, not into a side bend, but just a side plank. And I have my feet staggered flat on the floor on the sides of my feet. I'm going to rotate it back down, find my center plank again. I'm going to hold this for three full breaths, feel like I'm pushing away from the floor, opening shoulder blade, and guiding that full length. And then I'll bring a knee down, the other knee down, and the pedal up. I'm going to sit back into my shell stretch, keeping my hands on the pedal, dropping my chin a little bit. That'll also, the pedal moved a little bit. That'll help me stretch my whole posterior chain, my low back and my shoulders and my thoracic spine. Coming up out of that, I'm going to repeat that, going to the other side first. So I'm going to round down. Step out into my plank. Find the center plank for a couple breaths first, pulling the abs in, finding all the connections. And then I'm going to rotate to one side, finding that side plank. You feel really strong. You could lift that top leg. I'm going to bring it back down. And rotate back to that center plank. Nice and strong. Adjust my feet because I got away from me a little bit. Shoulders right over those wrists. Let's go up to the other side. Find my side plank, hold that. And if I'm feeling strong there, I can lift that top leg and do a little star plank. And I'm going to bring that foot down, rotate back to the center, hold that plank, and I'm going to lift one leg and do a little leg pull front. Lift, a little shift, put the foot down. And then my knees come back down. My pedal comes up, and I'm going to sit back into that shell stretch. And that was...
some footwork, some bridge, some abdominal work, and some plank work. So from here, I'm going to take this into um, some prone work. So I'm going to work some back body just to kind of balance that all out. I'm going to stay on this spring setting, but for space in my room, I'm going to push my chair a little bit away from the wall behind me. So here I'm going to lay with my pelvis, hip bone and pubic bone on top of the chair. So I usually just put the heel of my hand on the pedal, or I mean on the seat, and then find the pedal with the other hand. Because I don't want to be too far forward or too far back. Ideally, my shoulders or wrists are pretty lined up, but I don't want to be on my abdominal area. I want to be on my pelvis. That's where the hip bones are at the edge. Active legs, it can be a little bit apart or parallel together. Kind of depends on your SI joint. So you can always have the pedal all the way to down to find that position. So I'm just going to find my long line. And let's start with a little retract, protract, which means shoulder blades shrug towards each other and then they open. So it's at an adduction of the scapula. Getting that open and close a few times really helps work those shoulder blade stabilizers, the rhomboid, middle traps, lower traps, serratus, anterior, in case you wanted to know that. And then I'm going to find we're halfway between there, nice and connected. I'm going to take one hand off and put it by my forehead. Bend and straighten the pedal arm for one arm press. And I'm just going to do about five of those. And then I'm going to bring that hand back down and switch. So elbow coming in towards the chair, active in my whole body. That whole back line is really challenged here to not shift or shimmy or rotate. And then I'll put both hands back down and drop that down for a second. All right, I'm gonna take this into rotation prone. So I'm gonna find that same start position and I'm gonna put that, I have my left hand by my forehead just like I did for that arm press. But now I'm gonna protract just slightly with my right arm and twist my left elbow to the ceiling and bring it back. This is just a very basic rotation prone. Doesn't feel basic. <laughs> but we can progress that to stay open, extend my elbow, lift my heart another inch, bring it back down, bend my elbow and rotate to the ground. So just the rotation or add a straight arm and a lift, a lower, a bend, and a rotate. I'm gonna do that one more time. Twist, extend, lift, lower, bend, rotate, back down. And then I'm gonna switch sides. I like to push the pedal all the way down, just sometimes I need to reassess my alignment. Find that long line. My right hand's by my forehead. I'm gonna slightly protract the left arm as I twist. That helps you get a little more connected in that rotation. Always do the rotation that works for your body. So I'm gonna twist. You can stay there or hold the twist, straighten that right arm, lift another inch, lower, bend the elbow first, rotate back down. So I'm gonna rotate, reach, and lift, lower, bend, and come back. A twist, straighten the arm, lift, lower, bend, and come back down. All right, I'm gonna bend my knees, I'm gonna let that rest a second. I'm gonna go into a swan. So just a basic swan. I get tight in my hips a little bit, so I like a slight turnout, um, just because it does make me have a little more room in that SI joint to move. So get strong in those shoulders, kind of halfway, protracted, retracted, or connected is what I like it. And then, as if I was a seal rolling a ball with my nose, I want to watch that ball roll across the room as I lift my heart and then come back down. So it is spinal extension. I want to pull my abs in and try to maintain that stable back. My whole spine is extending, but I want it to move together. So I like to think about lifting the heart and the head follows. So I don't just throw my head back like a Pez dispenser neck. <laughs> In my case today, <laughs> instead of watching a ball roll across the room, I'm gonna watch a drip of sweat fall off of my nose onto my mat. <laughs> Sorry. Too much information, probably. Holding that swan, I'm gonna flutter my legs like a little swimming kick. Maintaining a stable swan. And then lower back down. I'm gonna dismount my chair. 
I like to put one hand by my hip to help me be stable as I bring it up. And then after all that extension, I like to stand pretty close with my feet under the frame a little bit, hands on the pedal, and then I'm just gonna stretch that back out from all that extension with a cat stretch from the back. And I'm just going into the big stretch. I'm gonna lift and lower a couple inches for little ab presses, so keeping my lower half still and trying to pull my abs in to increase that. And then I'm gonna let the pedal come up and stand up. All right, so I'm gonna pull that chair back out a little bit. I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit so I'm not headless. So now I'm gonna go into a standing foot press. So facing the chair, and again, you can make this heavier if you want to do more leg work, lighter if you want a little more balance work. So I'm gonna stand just a little bit away from the chair, and I'm gonna put my right foot in a high heel ball of the foot position. If I can, if you feel a little less stable, you can always put your whole arch of your foot on there. So I'm gonna find that pedal, and then my goal is that my hip bones stay level. So I do like sometimes to keep my hands on my hips for this for my own little feedback. Ribs over hips, fall posture. You can totally go reaching arms. If you had handles on your chair, which I could have, I don't have them on today, you could hold onto the handle for a balance aid. And then just lowering and lifting the pedal. And I'm trying to think about moving my thigh bone versus just shoving it down with my knee extension. And getting taller every time. The, Thing you'll notice if you keep it on this light spring, because I haven't changed it since footwork, is the standing leg does a lot of work here. I'm gonna do one more, and then I'll let that pedal come up and step off. And then I'm gonna switch legs. I can get the foot on the pedal first. You can always press it all the way down to help get you square and tall. Again, you can take the arms out to the side or reaching or on your hips. So I'm gonna compress the abdominals as I press that pedal down. Again, I'm in a parallel high heel position, doing the standing foot press forward. So, some more lower body work, but with a different challenge than sitting on the chair. I'm gonna do a couple more. And then I'll let that pedal come up and step off. So now I'm gonna turn sideways. So I'm in a Pilates V, not too far from the chair. And I'm gonna find that the, I'm kinda of at the back of my frame, so my front or pedal leg is gonna go on there in a turnout. And again, trying to get the sides of the waist long. Sometimes I like a little T arm for this. And I'm gonna press the pedal down and up here. So I'm challenging the standing leg to stay tall. And then a little bit of that adductor inner thigh to press the pedal up and down. Three, two, one. And then I'm gonna let that pedal come up and step off. So now I'm still at the back of my chair, just enough away that I won't scrape my inside ankle. I'm gonna take the outside leg and cross it over. So this is called the crossover cross. So again, I wanna stay square. A lot of times people turn towards the chair and I'm gonna find the lateral hip as I press that pedal down and up. You can go all the way down and all the way up. Again, it's really from the thigh bone. Yes, the knee extends as well, but I wanna to try to find that lateral hip complex as I stay tall. And breathe. One more, and then I'm gonna let that pedal come up and step off. All right, so I'm gonna turn and do the other side. So I'm gonna start in the turned out position, lined up with the back, my back towards the back of the chair, and then find the pedal with the front leg. Equal turnout, and is again trying to find the sits bones both pointing down, hips level, abs in, and then I'm gonna press down and up. So I could add arm movement with this. Opening and closing the arms as I open and close the spring. And again, finding a lot of stability work happening in my standing leg. I want to make sure that knee doesn't hyperextend and I don't roll in 
on my instep, but my big toe, little toe, heel bone stay a base or tripod of support. And then I'll let that come up, step off, and then parallel and a little closer to the chair. Again, if you had a handle, you could totally be holding onto the handle here. I didn't put mine on today. And then I'm gonna let that pedal come up and down, trying to find the lateral hip muscles. Sometimes I like my hand there because then I feel where I should feel it. I feel lots of feels. And again, staying square to your chair because it's really easy to rotate in. Some of that will depend on the mobility. You can always put a hand down that you have in your hips. Work in those deep rotators. And the abs have to stay compressing and lengthening in the back muscles, all those spinal stabilizers. I'm gonna do one more. And then let that pedal come up and step off. Spring setting works the same. This is kind of like, what all can I do on this same spring, right? I'm gonna stand about the width or length of my foot, I mean, away from the chair. And then I'm gonna reach forward, find the pedal. And then I'm just gonna do a full rounding down cat. Lower the pedal as far as I can keep my hips over my heels, flexing that spine. And then I'm gonna articulate this time back up to a flat back. My eye gaze stays on the pedal right at the edge of the seat. And then I'm gonna round back down towards the floor, trying to pull my abs in deeper into that round shape and then lengthen to a flat back. Articulating, I do get a little bit stiff in my lumbar, so sometimes I look a little like a flat tire in my round. But I'm still feeling those abs come in. I'm gonna do this one more time. Articulating down, holding this one down, I'm gonna bend and straighten my elbows, elbows pointing towards my knees. A little arm press, little shoulders and triceps. And every time I press, I'm trying to pull my abs a little bit more, like I have a string pulling me to the ceiling. Two, hold, and then release back, and I'll let that pedal go. All right, so I'm gonna come to sitting sideways on my chair, and I'm gonna go right into a mermaid, so I get a little lateral flexion. So I said flexion and extension, I did a little rotation earlier. I like to have my foot hang over, or my knee, so that my pelvis stays still. If you bring your foot up here, people tend to lift that hip. So this gives you a little more connection. And then I take my foot away from the chair out to the side so that instep stays on. So depending on how tall you are based on your chair, you might have less of your pelvis on there, but get square and tall. Then I'm gonna take my arms to a T. I'm gonna find the pedal and then I'm gonna side bend over. This is not how far down can I go. It's can I keep my pelvis still and laterally flex my spine. So that bottom arm, which is my right right now, I want to really feel like the underarm's connecting to press that down with the abdominals and the top side's getting a big opening stretch. And then I'm going to come back up out of it. I'm just going to come halfway out of it. I like to do three to five of these and then counter stretch. I'm going to try to breathe into that top rib cage. And I'm going to hold this one down, and then I'm going to diagonally reach across the room. Kind of feels like I have a little sash across my back. Come back to my side bend, all the way up. And then I'm going to press that hand that was on top into the seat of the chair and counter stretch away from my pedal. All right. And then I'm going to do the other side. So sitting sideways, again, finding the pelvis level, stable and square, hand out to a T to start, tip over to find the pedal, and then I want to laterally flex that spine. So I'm trying to reach, my right side is the top right now, I'm trying to reach that right sits bone further to the floor as I laterally flex my spine. And then I'm just going to come up out of that again a little bit, and then side bend back over. And come back up, and side bend over. Breathing into that top rib, really trying to expand it. And I'm gonna hold this one over, still strong in that bottom arm. And I'm gonna to reach to the opposite corner, give myself a diagonal reach, which feels like a big X across my back. Back to my side bend, all the way tall, press my hand into the seat, and counter stretch away. And then release. 
All right. I'm going to do a little torso press sitting. So the uh, exercise here is kind of like a reverse swan. Let me bring that so you can see. I'm going to sit barely, barely on the edge of my chair. I like to reach my hands back. If you have a box nearby, or even I can angle towards the reformer <laughs> that I have next to me, um, you can keep a foot down. I'm going to reach back till I find the pedal, and you can adjust which way your hands face to where it works for your shoulders. And then I'm going to try to find, again, that I'm on my edge of my system, legs at tabletop, and again, I can have a foot down on the floor or on a box there. So I'm going to roll my butt back down till my pelvis and lumbar spine are on the top of the chair. So that's where if you weren't barely on the chair, you won't fit. So I need to be able to get that lumbar and pelvis on the chair. And then I'm going to flex up from my upper back or right kind of the top of the abs is where I feel it. I'm going to try to flex towards my knees or thighs and back down. I'm keeping my legs in. So it's opening my front of the body. It is abs for sure. So it's kind of, like I said, it's a torso press sitting prep or a torso press sitting in a little reverse swan. Now I can take my legs out long or into a teaser shape and then I can come up into my teaser and then articulate back down, flex up. I can keep my legs at tabletop if I needed it nicer. So the first one I wasn't coming off, I was just doing a small flex. This is coming all the way to teaser. This is definitely a little bit more challenging and then I'll bend my knees to pop myself back up. So that was definitely a little bit more of a challenge there. All right, so that was a, I'm gonna say about a 35 minute chair workout. So there's so many things you can do on the chair, um, but I just went with some footwork, some bridging, a little bit of abdominals, some planks, some back body, prone body, arm work, rotation, um, lateral flexion, and uh, some standing legs. And then you can always do more cat stretches if you need a little more release. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this and it's helpful to your kind of more beginner to intermediate um, exercises. And I didn't do anything really to advance there today. Um, the teaser at the very end was probably the most um, advanced that we did. So this would be um, safe for most of you. Again, you can always be by a wall or have a dowel rod or if you had handles on your chair to help you balance or hand on a wall next to you. So again, I'm Kara, um, and I am a Pilates instructor um, at um, Club Pilates in Florida, and I am originally stop trained. At home, I have all the stop equipment, and when I'm working in the studio, I work on the balanced body equipment, so I can help if you ever have questions um, on swing settings. Thanks again for joining me.